Views expressed by Camaplan podcast guests may not reflect those of Camaplan. Camaplan does not guarantee the accuracy of information provided by guests, nor does it endorse or recommend any individual or organization. Camaplan is not an investment advisor, CPA, realtor, or attorney. You are encouraged to conduct your own due diligence before making investment choices. For any tax, legal, accounting, investment, or other questions, please consult a specialist. Welcome back to The Road to Financial Freedom, where experts share stories and secrets to unlocking financial independence. This podcast is brought to you by Camaplan, a self-directed IRA administrator focusing on educating investors on how to grow retirement savings faster through alternative investments. I'm Ricky Trong, Camaplan team member and podcast host. In each episode, we're going to take an in-depth look at the many roads taken to financial freedom and how they differ for each guest. Welcome back to The Road to Financial Freedom. Today's guest is Gordon Stein, MBA, CFEI, and he is an international keynote speaker, blogger, personal finance expert, and author of Cash Flow Cookbook, $2 million of financial freedom in 60 easy recipes. He is here today to give us more insight on how you can add $1 million of wealth to your retirement. Let's welcome Gordon Stein to the show today. Hey, Gordon, how are you? Hey, Ricky, great to be here. Thank you so much. Great. So excited to have you here. We've had some great chats in the past, and I'm just excited to welcome you to our audience. Um, So let's start off today by giving us a little bit of background and tell us where you're at today. And I want to know about this cookbook. So I'm excited. (laughs) (laughs) Well, thank you so much. Um, You know, Ricky, I kind of stumbled into the idea of Cashflow Cookbook. Uh, I found a way to get car washes for free, you know, which saved $25 a month. Um, Not really a big deal. But what was interesting was it was so easy. And then not long after that, I discovered how to slash the cost of my home alarm monitoring system, another $25 a month. And I got curious and I built a list of these ideas and they all had to be minimal effort, minimal sacrifice. So we're not making our own cleaning supplies. There's no tinfoil in the window. We're not driving to six grocery stores. These are ideas that everyone can use. So I built them into a list. And then the list became a spreadsheet. And the spreadsheet looked at what happened if you could invest those savings over time, let's say in your IRA, and how much money would it be worth? The numbers were massive. Took it to my accountant. He checked over the math and he says, this is good. This would make a great book. So it started as a novel. It just didn't fit as a novel. And under my breath one day, I said, it's more like a cookbook. And that was the start of Cashflow Cookbook. Wow. Wow, that is so cool. You know, when you think of cookbooks, you just think of something in the kitchen. Who knew that, you know, a little idea of making money can really turn into this awesome thing that you're doing. So why don't you tell me about the book? Maybe give us an insight to some of those recipes to how to succeed and get that million dollars. Because I know I need that for my retirement. (laughs) And I'm sure our audience does as well. So let's just jump right into it. Yeah, great. You know what? I mean, I think, Ricky, if you if you read all the personal finance books out there, a lot of them are pretty similar. You know, you want to save 10% of what you want, what you earn. You want to give up things you love. You want to do some detailed budgeting. And if you do all of that and you invest consistently over a long period of time, you'll become wealthy. And you know what? I think the advice is correct, but I just don't think it's a whole lot of fun. If I were to say to my spouse, let's take this weekend and do some detailed budgeting. I'm going to be sleeping in the garage. (laughs) So, you know, I mean, it'll work, but it's not a lot of fun. If somebody says to me, you know, give up the things that you love. Well, I'm not giving up my guitars. I'm not giving up my kayaks, my bikes, you know, uh, nice to go out for nice meals. You know, I want great concert tickets. I'm not giving any of that up. So nobody wants to give up the things that they love. But what you do need to do is you do need to save 10% or I think even 15 or 20% of what you earn. But most people view that as impossible. So then you're into this tug of war, you know, do you save for the future or do you enjoy your life now? And I think the answer is you do both of those things. And the breakthrough, I think, really is cash flow cookbook because the whole concept is you're going to free up the cash from the things that don't give you joy. So if you can slash your electricity bill in half, how did your lifestyle change? Um, Not at all. What did you give up exactly? Nothing, right? So this is the idea behind the book. So, 
In the book, we go through every area of spend. So think of housing, transportation, food, household, lifestyle, and financial. So all of the major areas of spend in order, of size of spend for most people. And in each of those areas, there's 10 financial recipes that show you exactly how to lower each of those costs significantly. If you add it all up in total, the book shows you step-by-step how to free up up to $13,000 of monthly cash flow. Wow. So that's the idea behind the book. The first part of the book, we have a chance to look over the shoulder of this couple, Eric and Keisha. And they're like many Americans. They're they're doing well financially. They're both working. They've got uh, some twins. They've got a set of twins. Um, and they're doing well. And they're going out for meals. They've got vacations. Everything's great. But they're really not putting much away. So if they were to carry on in the direction they're going, they're going to approach retirement with more or less nothing. And that's a big problem. So um, they make a series of financial discoveries. And as they make these financial discoveries, they invest that money that gets freed up. And we have a chance to look over their shoulder as they go on this path and they make all these discoveries. And by doing all these things and investing all the savings that they find, giving up exactly nothing, they end up with an extra million and a half of wealth at their retirement. Wow. That's how the book works. I love it. I love that it actually follows a couple and you can really be in their shoes and you can almost like switch and be, that's me. Like I can do this too. Cause it really makes it easy to follow. I love that. So what are some of the, you know, what are some of the tips or something that you can really end up putting away 13,000 of monthly, you know, expenses and, and, keep that wealth going. I mean, I don't even know if I can make 13,000 worth of monthly <laughs> expenses. Like, so just give me a sneak peek of that or yeah. how, how your pro, like thought process came in to figure that out. Yeah. It was two years of research to gather these ideas up. Um, the book began in Canada, which is my home and native land. I moved to the United States about two and a half years ago. And then I just, uh, about three weeks ago, put out the US edition of the book, which we see right here. So um, the Canadian book went through seven printings. It became a a newspaper column. And I speak on the book uh, now all across Canada and the US. So if we we delve into it, what do these ideas look like? They continue to evolve. I keep finding new ones. Some of them are really about conserving. So we touched before on the idea of saving on you know, gas and electricity and some of these things. So there's simple steps that homeowners can take to significantly reduce those costs. As an example, I'm here in Cleveland, Ohio, uh, in a 1938 home, which tends not to win any awards for energy efficiency. (laughs) So a handful of simple moves um, lowered both my electricity and my gas bills by 50%. So those two moves save about $200 a month between the two bills. Easy. You know, as one example, just a quick inspection of the home. I had a door that goes between my home and my garage. And I thought, she's a little bit drafty. Well, it turns out there was a three quarter inch gap below the door with the ice cold winter January air coming straight into the house. And, you know, the previous homeowner was the original owner of the house, owned the house for whatever it was, 70 years or something. Never addressed it. So, you know, it was $7 worth of weather stripping under that one door. But people don't realize that a three-quarter inch gap underneath a door that's 30 inch long, that's the same as having a six inch hole in your wall. And it stayed that way for 70 years. So it was a handful of quick things. I tell you exactly what to do. It's inexpensive. Make a few changes. And I saw all of those energy costs. So those are the kinds of things that are about conserving. But again, we didn't give anything up, right? Yeah. Um, Other ones are interesting because some of them are quite stealthy. So as an example, um, just recently, I really got into the whole business of credit scores. And there could not be anything more boring than a credit score. (laughs) I mean, you know, who who cares what my credit score is? Well, the answer is you do. (laughs) Because um, it makes a massive difference. Your credit score can swing the cost of your car insurance by 30 to 50%. It can swing the cost of your home insurance by another 30 to 50% and wait for the big one. 
it can swing the cost of your loans, the, the interest cost of your loans by up to 70%. Wow. And all kinds wow. of people who are, you know, well off and doing well in their businesses, et cetera, they don't look at their credit score and a massive percentage of them have errors. So they may have you listed with credit cards you got rid of years ago. Um, they may be attributing other people's financial instruments to you. Not at all unusual. These are easy to fix. But if you don't know your credit score, when you go to buy all these different kinds of insurance or even getting a job, you may be getting turned down for jobs because you appear to have or in fact have a poor credit score. So there's another example. You know, you remedy your credit score. There's companies that can help you fix it if you can't do it yourself. Um, but it could be costing you hundreds of dollars a month. You wouldn't even know it. So it's very stealthy. Wow. Thank you for giving us insight on that because that's the first I've ever heard. Like, I mean, I've purchased a home and I've have loans and things like that, you know, student loans, obviously. And I was never told that's like, that's a big one. That's like a bomb you just dropped on me because, you know, I mean, I have a great credit score. I'm not going to, you know, pat myself on the back, but I've worked hard and my husband has too. And, you know, we always just kind of were like, oh, thank God we have a good credit score because we knew it did affect some things, you know, but I yeah. didn't know all that. Wow. I'm going to have to take a good peek at that later with a magnifying glass and make sure that we're, uh, you know, not getting anyone else's information in there too. Oh, thanks for the heads up. I love that. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, I give you I give you a couple more because there's there's so many of these things and people just miss them completely. Yeah. I'll give you one that's um, I had in the book, but then I just lived it as a personal example. So I started taking uh, pills for my cholesterol, which is probably the most commonly prescribed drug in America. You know, Crestor, uh, one of these cholesterol lowering pills. <clears throat> anyway, I got the prescription from my doctor, and most of us when we get a prescription in hand, you're thinking about one thing. What are you thinking? Prescriptions in hand. Get it taken care of at the go, go like get CVS or whatever. <laughs> what we don't think about is how much will it cost? Yeah. We're focusing on getting it filled. And even if you have a healthcare plan that includes drugs, they often involve co-pays and minimums and deductibles and all of these things. So, and plenty of people don't have a drug plan. So I went to get the pills filled at one of the large, uh, you know, drug stores. And, um, I said, how much are the pills? And she said, it's $107. And I said, is that a month? And she said, yes. So oh I have to take goodness. these pills for the rest of my life. So $107 isn't going to break me, but it's also not insignificant. No. So I said, well, that seems a little pricey. And she said, why don't you get one of our drug cards? Mm -hmm. And I said, well, what, is that? what will that do? She says, well, the pills will go from $107 a month to $63 a month. It's about $500 a year. I said, how much are the drug cards? She says, they're $20 a year. So spending $20 a year to save $500 a year, yeah. pretty good deal, right? I'm all over that. Yeah. So I sign up. So up for dinner with my brother-in-law, and I told him the story, quite pleased with myself. And he said, no, no. He says, you want to go with one of the online drug stores? I wasn't even aware of them. He told me the one that he uses. I look it up after I got home. Um, you can just look up your pills, the dose, and all the rest of it. Thirteen dollars a month. One hundred and seven, sixty-three, wow. thirteen. This is something I've got to do for the rest of my life. Yeah. So I thought, gee, that's something. But as a business person, I know if it goes from one hundred and seven to sixty-three to thirteen, you're not done. So I did a little more searching around. I found a different online pharmacy. I get my pills delivered to the house. I don't even get them in my car. Seven dollars a month. Wow. Did a blog post on cashflowcookbook.com and I called it how I saved 94% on my prescription drugs. So these things are everywhere. And you know, I would say you could you could get the book, Cashflow Cookbook, you could read the thing in a couple of evenings, but you want to put some sticky notes, put some post-it notes on the pages, make it yours, you know, say, geez, I haven't thought about this recipe. Another one you might say, geez, I'm already doing that. But if you go through the book, I'll all but guarantee you'll find yourself at least four or $500 of monthly savings that you weren't aware of, minimal effort, minimal sacrifice. Wow. That's how it works. That's awesome. That's really great. And I mean, I can relate to the, you know, the medicine um, kind of story. I mean, I have a father that has a lot of different 
health issues. And, you know, it, we had to definitely find that. And like, we also found like a good RX card. I don't know if you've ever seen that, but yes. like that's completely free. So you can use those in certain mm-hmm. places and yeah, but the online stores, it's so nice. And then they ship it and you're like, why is shipping so expensive for everything else? And then this is, you brought it down to $7, including shipping. I mean, mind blown. Right. Wow. That's yep. amazing. <laughs> so yeah. many of these things in every area of spend, and yeah. the beautiful thing is minimal effort, minimal sacrifice. And I often say to people, no budgeting. There's an approach that um, saves you that grind of monthly budgeting. Wow. No budgeting. Wow. That's a totally different, you know, outlook entirely of what you always hear. It's like, oh, budget, budget, budget. And, you know, my husband, he's a he's an accountant and he's like, oh, you got to do budgeting. It's just the biggest part of financial, you know, wealth. And and I'm like, OK, and now I'm hearing you saying no budgeting. And I'm just like, well, if you can do it, you wrote a whole book on it. I'm sure there's, you know, definitely something to crack open there. Oh, my gosh. So much to learn. I love it. <laughs> Well, let's let's spend a moment on the budging one because I think that's yeah. an interesting one. So I'm not saying it's bad. And if it's working for somebody, that's great. But it has some issues. So one of them is that you could set a budget and they're not easy to follow because inevitably, you know, you get a roof leak or a you know, a dishwasher packs it in or something, throws you right off kilter. Um, but the thing is you could budget and you could track that budget month after month after month, and then you can hit 65 or whatever age, and you may not have any money because it doesn't really tell you, it doesn't put the focus on the savings. So the number that I think is really important to track is your wealth. So if you take everything that you own, which would include your 401k, if you have one, your IRA, your home, your vehicles, whatever you think you could actually sell something of tangible value, then you subtract everything that you owe your mortgage, your HELOC, your credit cards, you know, car loans, whatever it may be. And what you're left with is what I call your wealth. Mm-hmm. And when you have wealth, it gives you options. You could take a year off, you could retire early, you could give more money to charity, you could look after you know, a relative who needs your help. But it gives you choice, it gives you freedom, it gives you calm. And if you track that wealth number every month, I think it actually rewires your brain. You start to think about your money differently <clears throat> because when you see that wealth growing, your debts are getting paid down. You're growing the value of your IRA and or your 401k or your assets, whatever it may be. And now you're on a path. And when you get that rolling and as a couple, let's say you look at your wealth number, you do the calculations every month, pull out all your statements, you see it starting to move and you can see the components of what's changing. And now you've got hope. You feel that your work is going somewhere tangible. You're actually building something. And then you start to think about everything differently. In a budgeting world, you'd say, okay, we budgeted $650 a month for a car payment. You go to the car dealer, what are they gonna say? They're gonna say, oh, I've got you in this gorgeous vehicle. Now it's a 128 month loan. Don't worry about that. It'll fit in your $650 budget. Well, you're not doing anything great for your wealth, putting it mildly. You're signing up for this massive loan, the very high interest costs because it's a very long duration loan. And they'll say, look, here's what we'll give you for your trade-in. Maybe your trade-in's underwater and all that debt's getting piled on top. It's going to get squeezed into $650 a month so it'll fit your budget, but it's not helping your wealth. So I think tracking wealth is really important. The other thing that I suggest the help of this whole idea of budgeting is it tends to be this big mess. You've got, you know, your electricity bill, your gas bill, your home insurance, your car insurance, all of these monthly recurring things. And then mixed in with all that in your joint checking account is you've got dinners out and birthday parties and things for the kids and whatever. It's a big jumbled mess. No wonder people get so frustrated. I like the idea of separating those two parts. So let's get those monthly recurring <clears throat> bills all in one account that gets paid from you know some combination of the paychecks. The money just gets automatically deposited, automatically mm-hmm. heads out every month. <clears throat> now you can just focus on those discretionary expenses much, much easier. Mm-hmm. Then what you wanna do is you wanna grind all of those bills down, what we talk about in cash flow Cookbook, <clears throat> free up that money, and there's your incremental wealth or debt pay down. Awesome. 
I have to, I can't wait to read this book because I have a lot to learn. And I think that you're going to be a great teacher. I mean, obviously other people want to hear what you have to say. I mean, you're, you're a keynote speaker, you're a blogger. People love your blogs. They, you know, especially telling them about, you know, just the little prescription hack, basically. Not that you want to say hack because it sounds so like, you know, skittish, but I mean, it's a great thing that you're doing. Um, yeah. So what about, um, what about like in connection with savings and things like that? Do you do you give any kind of advice on how to save or where to save maybe like in certain kinds of, you know, maybe an IRA or, you know, something like that? Like, do you give that kind of instruction or is that not exactly how you're considering a recipe? Yeah, I don't get into as much. I, I have in some of my blog posts. Um, I think, you know, an IRA is a great vehicle for people. Um, it's extremely flexible, mm. particularly if it's a Roth IRA. So then, you know, your sort of taxes paid up front. Um, mm. You know, I think that's a great idea for people. And that's a real priority. Maybe the only higher priority would be paying down high interest rate debt. So if you're sitting on, you know, credit card debt and you're paying 22 or 24% interest a month, if that's a five alarm blaze. You want to get rid of that. That's a major priority. And then I think putting money into an IRA um, is a fabulous place uh, to focus. So, you know, the biggest thing for most people is freeing up the cash flow. Most people feel they don't have the 10%. When I speak with people who are earning $50,000 a year, what they'll say is they'll say, I just don't have the 10% because I can barely fit everything in. When I speak with people who earn $500,000 a year, they say, I can't free up the 10% because I can't fit everything in. Mm-hmm. What happens is we get this lifestyle creep. So the more we earn, the more we spend. And then we have this sense of entitlement. I've worked hard. I made $500,000 this year. Of course, I'm going to get a BMW. You know, This house isn't reflective of somebody who earns $500,000 a year. So we see this lifestyle creep moving up on us. And one of the really great ways to save is, you know, if you see a raise coming in or your business starts to kick into gear, you're making more money, immediately carve out a big chunk of that and get that working for you in savings. <clears throat> you did just fine with the house before, you did fine with the vehicle you had before. So let's just stretch that a little longer <clears throat> and get that money invested in assets that are going to grow over time. Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, I can see that in general. I mean, it's also like, I feel like just the American way too. the more money you have, the more things that you want to show that you have that money. So that's a great perspective, really just, you know, especially if you know, like a bonus is coming in, like already allocate that to not go to that new car or, you know, something like that. Just make sure that you put it into like an IRA or a self-directed IRA, like here at Cama plan. Um, You know, I mean, you can do something like that and then you can make sure that wealth is continuing because you're putting it into something that's going to continue to work for you. I love that. Yeah. I mean, that's awesome. Like, I mean, you, you really don't have to talk too much about budgeting, but that's, that's really great advice right there. I love it. Well, it it can kind of take care of itself. So if you Mm -hmm. go through and you're able to reduce all of these costs, and we can talk about a few more examples that are pretty interesting. As you do that, you automatically have a means to fund your IRA because you're going to reduce these bills. And immediately you want to get that committed into your monthly contribution. So real easy to do. So I think that's, you know, that's a great place for people to start. We said at the beginning, talked about adding this incremental million dollars to your wealth at retirement. Well, how does that work? Yeah. So if we take growing your investments at 7%, you know, the S&P 500 has averaged about 9% since, since its inception. I like to use the number of 7%. So if you had $400 a month going into your investment vehicle, growing it at 7% over 40 years, that's an incremental million dollars. Wow. Now, how hard is that to do? <clears throat> you know, one example is people bringing their lunch to work. Over the course of a career, that can add a quarter of a million dollars to your wealth. Wow. It's, it's really that simple. <laughs> it's not that hard to do. The average American, retires with only $200,000. 64% of Americans retire with just $10,000. Wow. 
So something like bringing your lunch, now you have some context, that can add a quarter of a million dollars to your wealth at retirement. So these ideas are incredibly powerful. Yeah, and it's not even something that's hard to really do. I mean, I know you've already touched on this a ton of times, but it's it's simple little changes. I mean, there's not much effort into it, but there is some effort, right? Like you have to make sure you pack that lunch. Like that's something you have to be conscious of. So it's it's a conscious thinking. It's not really a ton of extra movement. It's not this, yeah, you have to go to the grocery store, but you're doing that anyway because you need to have food in your house. So just buy, you know, some lunch meat or buy something to make salads with and yeah, you just make sure you pack it either the night before or you can even food prep. Like, you know, that's a big thing. Everyone's doing it on YouTube these days and TikTok. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, there's definitely simple little steps. Yes, there is effort, but not a ton like you stated. And yeah, I mean, these things could really make a difference over time. I have been packing my lunch as of recent, and I can see that there is much more money in my bank account because of that. So that's been a huge help. Um, So yeah, I can totally attest to that one. (laughs) Yeah. And some of them are easier still, you know, you can go online and reshop your home and car insurance. Typically, if you have a couple of drivers and a couple of vehicles, I outline exactly how to do that in the book. Um, you can free up $200 a month in most families on your car insurance just by doing that kind of a comparison. Online tools to do that. You can go to an independent agent who carries multiple lines of insurance for home and car and get in there and reshop those. It's well worth taking a look every two or three years. Reshopping it doesn't take a lot of time. It's not like the old days where you had to call each insurance company and grind through your, well, let's, you know, sit on hold for 20 minutes and then grind through your, VIN number of your vehicle and your number of years of accident free driving so fast and easy. Now you can do it with a laptop, a glass of wine. That takes you about 15 minutes. There's another $200. So some of these ideas are much, much easier even than, you know, packing a lunch. Yeah. Opportunities in every single category of spend. Wow. Yeah. And I love that you're pointing that out because, you know, I have heard over the years, yeah, you can change your car insurance and you can shop around and it always just seems so tedious. But yeah, I I mean, you're right. It's so easy. You can just literally just click a few buttons online. We're online anyway, probably browsing social media or Amazon shopping, you know? So, (laughs) I mean, definitely take another minute and just enter that information into the card. And I feel like they like, there's like a list of them. So they would probably even, you know, do the, the money for you. Like they would show you each individual company. I feel like it's almost like buying a flight, you know, you can buy like a flight. That's exactly like that. (laughs) That's awesome. That's exactly like that. And you can even make sure that all the parameters are staying the same. I'm not advocating having less liability, figure out what the right level is for you. And then you just compare that apples to apples, huge difference. Yeah. Yeah. Compare it to what you're already having. (laughs) <laughs> opportunities, you know, since COVID, now we're all much more familiar with living on Zoom and all these mm-hmm. kinds of things. And um, people often don't realize their commuting costs. Most people don't sit and do the math, may involve toll highways, you know, obviously fuel costs, parking costs, um, and time is another whole big area and vehicle maintenance. So I encourage people that if you're doing any kind of commuting, and often there's two commuters in the house. So, you know, both partners heading off commuting somewhere. I would take a real hard look at it. You know, what are the monthly costs that you're actually spending on commuting? How much are you spending on gas um, and, you know, incremental insurance because you're driving more, all of these things. So more and more workplaces are getting more flexible. So if you've been working, you know, from the office four days a week, you know, could you make that three? Right. Um, can you do a carpool? Who else lives near you? When you look at the costs, not uncommon to see people with $200 a month of commuting costs. Some are hidden, incremental yeah. maintenance on the car and depreciation, whatever. Um, so that can be another big opportunity. Um, you work from home one more day a week. You know, what you don't think of is the commuting costs. You know, you can get cheaper parking near your work. There's tools to help you sharp for that. So when I think about cash flow cookbook, it's the ultimate filter to go through each area of spend. Look at a recipe, already doing that. Look at the next recipe saying, whoa, I hadn't thought of that one. And there's an opportunity to do your own arithmetic in there and see what it would be worth you in those savings over 10, 20, or 30 years. Yeah. 
No, definitely. I feel like it's almost like an insider's guide because I feel like you're the insider and you're just spreading these secrets that aren't really well known. I mean, yeah, you always think about, oh, like parking, especially if you go in the city or something, you have to find a parking garage and, you know, you're like, oh, it's 20 bucks for how many hours? Like, and then you want to try and get your most experience out of that and say, you you know, say it's $20 for five hours and you only want to stay for two. Well, you're going to kind of force yourself to stay that whole time. But if you can find a parking spot that's, you know, you only pay two for two hours and it's, you know, 10 bucks, you know, it would be a better deal. So I definitely have to keep looking into these secrets because there's things that I probably don't even shop around for that I totally should be like, I mean, especially with the gas and all that just inflation right now is just skyrocketing. And, you know, I never thought about how much my car, even though I don't have a car payment on it, I've had my same car for 10 years. I never really thought about how much it's still costing me just, you know, for maintenance and things like that. So you really opened my eyes to a lot of things. I really appreciate that. (laughs) Oh, my pleasure. Yeah, no. And I feel like that's, you know, that's what you did. That's why you made this book. And uh, I really can't wait to read it. I know I've said that already, but <laughs> I really can. I think it's going to really help me build my wealth in the long time or in the long term, excuse me. Um, so I know you had mentioned, I don't know if we mentioned it today or when we spoke last, but adding ten uh, $1 million to your wealth in 10 hours of work, what does a 10 hours of work look like? So really what you do is um, take the book and go through it. Okay. You know, make post-it notes on the recipes that make you say, geez, I hadn't thought of that one, or I should take a look at that one. It goes across every area of spend. And they're done as recipes. So at the end of each recipe, it's got a yield table, just like when you make a batch of cookies, it yields 24 cookies. So in the yield table, I say, look, here's what it might look like in what I call a light serving. So a single person, maybe with an apartment, they don't have a lot of these expenses. Maybe they're starting out. So they may only be able to save, you know, whatever it is, $50 on that particular recipe. But you might have a situation of a family. You know, they've got three teenagers. They've got five cell phones. They've got two vehicles. Maybe they've got a cottage. So now the numbers are much bigger. That might be a hearty serving. And I show a worked example using some of the ingredients in the recipe and what that might save and what that might look like. So then the idea is the reader can take a look at that and say, okay, well, I wouldn't be able to save that much. Or, oh my goodness, that's low for my situation. So you can calculate your own savings. And then I show you exactly this little worksheet to show you what that might be worth if you invested those savings for 10, 20, and 30 years. If you save, let's say $100 on something monthly, you're not saving $100. You're saving $100 that could be invested at 7% month after month And that's really going to take off and grow. Okay. So that's the idea. Now, where does the time come in? First of all, you need to take the time to read the book. Follow the couple at the beginning, Eric and Keisha. Take a look at how they freed up a million and a half in wealth of their retirement. Our focus group readers all said the same thing. They said, but that's so easy. And we said, yes, that's (laughs) the whole point. That's why we ran these focus groups to get a sense of what people thought. So it clearly can make a difference. Then what you need to do is you need to action all of these steps. So for example, you might say, geez, I haven't looked at my car insurance in years. I've been with the same provider. You know, it was my former brother-in-law's company. I, I don't know, I just left it there. So great, you're gonna mark that one and you're gonna go and action it. So that one might take you 20 minutes. You're gonna go online or you're gonna deal with an independent insurance agent and do that shopping, apples for apples. So that might take a little bit of time. You flip the next couple of recipes really aren't applicable to you, but the next one catches your eye. And maybe it's about taking a look at your cell phone costs. Maybe it's about looking at alternatives to cable television to slash another $100 a month. So you're going to go through the book, pick the ones you want. Some require some reshopping of things, some comparison shopping. Others are things you want to look into, like your credit score. You may have to go online and check that out, and you may have to make a few phone calls on it. But a typical person might invest you know, maybe 10 at the most, maybe 20 hours total to set Mm -hmm. themselves on a completely different wealth trajectory. Sometimes people say when I'm speaking uh, to audiences, sometimes people say, I just don't have the time to do it. And then I remind them of a fact that really is quite shocking. The average American watches 20 hours of television a week. So the answer is, um, actually, you do have the time. (laughs) 
<laughs> you're going to, maybe you could just TiVo those episodes for the week, double down the week after and get your finances tuned up. So, you know, give yourself a date, uh, you know, a glass of wine, a copy of cash flow cookbook, and you're going to action all of those steps. Send yourself into a completely different wealth trajectory, minimal effort, minimal time. Definitely. And I can totally attest to, you know, saying that you don't have time. I mean, you get caught in like a TV show or something like that and you want to binge watch it, but there's so many other things you could be doing. And yeah, put it on in the background. Sure. But I mean, they can listen to our podcast right here and be doing that research at the same time. I mean, you can multitask even if you don't think you can. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. There's always a way to make time, especially if you want to better your wealth. You know, if you really want to have that improvement, you have to make the effort. You have to make one little sacrifice for a big, you know, a big future ahead. So I totally understand where you're coming from. And I love that you point that out to people and you make it so easy, especially by showing, you know, uh, a single family, which would be like you said, a, a smaller portion versus, you know, a, a multifamily where it would be that larger portion. I love that you really just went through with this cookbook and really just compared everything to making a recipe. And to me, that that's genius. I mean, <laughs> I couldn't do it. That's really cool. I I love how you came up with that idea. And it really does put it in good perspective because, you know, we always follow a recipe. Yeah, we're going to just follow the the Toll House, you know, recipe to make a bag of cookies or a batch of cookies from the bag of chips, you know? So, I mean, it's really, I like that you make it so easy. It's great. A lot of finance, personal finance books, they're dry. Um, yeah. They're difficult to read. You know, you, you can't sort of sit on the couch and read them. They've got too many numbers. This is, this is literally is like a cookbook. And I love the cookbook analogy to your point because you know what is it, what is a recipe? It lays out what you need. It lays out the steps. It tells you exactly how to do it. There's no you know pondering. There's no wondering how to do it. It's it's a recipe, right? By definition. Yeah. And this is something that you know everyone can follow. Make a huge difference in their wealth. I love it. Yeah, you, you know, anything can be made into a recipe, and that's such a great point that you know your wealth can really be just boiled down. I mean, not to use a pun for cooking, but <laughs> you can really yeah. boil your wealth down into a recipe and you've done it. You've done it. Gordon, I've literally enjoyed this. I've, I've been looking forward to this for a while now since we last talked and I'm really excited for our audience to hear about this. So is there any um, advice or anything that you've learned over the course of creating this book or just in general over the time of, you know, you being you, I guess, that you would have told yourself when you were younger? Is that is there something that would have maybe got you on this trajectory even sooner? Well, you know, I was able to retire in my mid-50s because I, in essence, followed the book. But honestly, if I would have read the book when I was 25, um, it really would make me think differently about all of these things. You know, it makes a massive difference. I sometimes talk about my eldest son, I use him as an example uh, in my talks, and, um, you know, he was very interested in the book and, you know, he sort of, you know, he, he contributed some of the content, you know, but he absolutely lived it. And it made such a difference in his wealth trajectory. You know, he started out, he bought a four or five year old Toyota Corolla, most reliable car possible. I graduated, bought a brand new car. So right away, you know, we're going to be on completely different trajectories. One's going to take off much quicker than the other. Mm -hmm. Um and similarly, you know, I got my own apartment when I graduated. He moved in with three or four other guys, you know, used a roommate app to find the right guys. So now his rent got slashed and that meant his car, his used car got paid off in about three or four months. So he wasn't paying interest costs all the time. So you see all of these changes and that enabled them to, you know, get to a savings rate of 40, 50, 60 percent. Wow. Because he just thought about all these things differently. In some cases, he did sacrifice a little bit, but not that big of a deal because now he's on this terrific trajectory of financial freedom. And that's what I want for all of your listeners. Yes, same here. That is definitely what I want. And since you mentioned financial freedom, it's the question that we're asking everyone. What does that mean to you in a nutshell? Financial freedom. I think it happens when you spend less money than you earn. And the longer you do it, the richer you get. I think it's no more complicated than that. But I think 
that freedom happens when you start to realize that joy doesn't come from having more things. And if you think about it, you know, you get all excited about something, whatever it is, a clothing article, or it's a piece of technology, you go and buy it. And then, you know, that buzz goes down almost immediately. Then the credit card bill comes and the buzz drops even lower because things don't, you know, they really don't give us pleasure. There's a handful of things. I love my guitars and kayaks and bikes, but those are a bot. You buy them once and then you enjoy them for a lifetime. So I think changing that mindset is a big part of it. But then there's another big part that's all about reducing the costs of things that don't give you joy. And that's even easier to do. And it's a freebie. And that's all money that can be growing inside your IRA. Yeah. And they can learn all those tips and tricks in the cookbook itself. So why don't you tell me a little bit there where we can follow you, find you, buy the book even. And uh, yeah, please let us know. Great. So uh, take a look at cashflowcookbook.com. Um, I've got blog posts in there. Uh, the blog posts have gone a little fallow for the last little while while I was writing the new edition of the book, but I'll be picking them back up again. There's about 60 great ones in there that can help you with all kinds of innovative savings ideas. It's all free. Um, register for the blog posts, then you get them in your inbox uh, once a week as I write them. Um, there's no spam. There's nothing else that happens. Um, get inspired by that. There's um, ingredients, which are on the website. So these are companies and tools that can help save you money worth taking a look at. And then um, grab a copy of Cashflow Cookbook. You can get it on Amazon. Um, right now on Amazon, there's Kindle edition and paperback edition of both the US and the Canadian version of the books. So that's, that's probably the best you know, $20 you're ever going to spend. It's the biggest no-brainer ever. $20, I can all but guarantee you're going to free up at least four or $500 a month get that money working for you. There's your best first investment. You can follow me online. Uh, typically it's at Cashflow Cookbook. Um, other than Twitter, which wouldn't give me enough characters. So it's at Cashflow Cook BK. So it's a little bit abbreviated. Love to see you out there. You can find out how to reach me on my website at Cashflow Cookbook. And if you need a speaker, I'm a professional speaker. I'm out speaking all the time uh, to the clients of wealth advisors. So I speak with wealth advisors. I speak with companies to help their employees get to a place of financial wellness. And I speak at schools. So love to connect with all of you. And uh, hopefully this information is helpful. And I look forward to seeing you with a much, much better financial future. Yes. Very inspirational to me and to our audience. I can't wait to pick up the book myself and just dive right in and, you know, follow these recipes as if I were cooking in the kitchen, but just cooking for my financial wealth. I love it. Well, I just want to say thank you so much to you, Gordon. I had a great chat with you today and I'm just so glad that we were finally able to get this podcast up here. I know you're going to possibly do a webinar with Cama Plan in the future and um, we're excited to hear about that. We'll definitely make sure our audience, you know, can definitely pay attention to that. Um, if you're on YouTube, you can see our QR code. You can scan that. It's going to give you all the links that Gordon has mentioned. Um, you can buy his book. You can follow him on Facebook, Instagram, um, Twitter. His Twitter is on there. If you can't remember that tag because it's changed because uh, of the silly character, you know, preference. But um, yeah, I just want to say thank you so much to our sponsor, Cama Plan, and our producers at Honeycomb Productions. And of course, um, Gordon Stein here just for spending time with us today. Please make sure to pick up the ca uh, cash flow cookbook. Uh, you can get it Canadian or American or US, I guess, um, on the Amazon. The links will be posted. And I just want to say, I hope you all had a great journey on this road to financial freedom. And we'll see you on the next one.